Friends Podcast. Hi, I'm Diane Hunt. I am an impressionist realist painter connecting with nature through my brush. I work in oil paint and watercolor and I live in the countryside of Maryland's eastern shore, not far from the Chesapeake Bay. You can find me online at dianehuntstudio.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Diane Hunt Studio. Hi, I'm Constance Brosnan of Steve Brosnan's Jewelry Designs. I live in Oklahoma on a prairie, and I make uh, handmade jewelry in silver, copper, and brass. I'm an artist that paints. I paint pastels and in oil sometimes. Hello, this is Clyde J.K.L. I'm the host of this podcast. I am a emerging representational artist. I do historic rend- renderings, seascapes, landscapes, volcanicals, birds, and whatnot. The tight illustrative hand and watercolor, pen and ink, and acrylic paints. And I live in Oklahoma City. And here we are, once again, the Artist Friends for the Artist Friends Podcast. This is September the 23rd, 2019, and we are episode 14. My name is Clyde J. Kell, and I am here with Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson. Hello, Diane. Hi, Clyde. Hi, everyone. Hello, Constance. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Di, Diane. Hello, everybody. Hey. <laughs> right. All right. This week, one of our recommended videos was our friend Sergio Gomez. I always get a kick out when uh, when he's talking with Sergio's breakfast with Sergio. You know, he says, my friend. Every other sentence is, my friend, my friend. (laughs) That just is is his nature of his his personality. But uh, he talked, a video was uh, why uh, artists uh, need patience. Well, hello, my friend. Welcome to Breakfast with Sergio. In this episode, we're going to talk about patience when it comes to your art marketing. Well, hello, my friend. Welcome back to Breakfast with Sergio. I'm super happy to be here with you. Welcome to my breakfast table. Well, what's on my plate today? I have a bowl of oatmeal, which is super hot. It is actually very hot. And I was thinking about what to talk about today here with you in Breakfast with Sergio. And, well, I'm waiting for this thing to be, you know, cold, cooler so that I can actually eat it. So I'm I'm like, well, I think it might be a really good idea to talk about patience because it's something that I see a lot of artists feel like, you know, everything has to happen right away, particularly when it comes to their marketing, right, to their marketing efforts. There's no patience. Everybody wants results really quickly because – it's so easy to compare yourself with other artists or with other people that seem like they're having great results. And then you try yourself like, it's not working. This is not working. Why is not working with me? And then you start to question yourself, your art and the way you do things. And very quickly, you know, you lose patience and you feel like you are just not winning. It's just not happening while it's happening for everybody else. And my friend, you know, most of the time is patience. Of course, you got to do things right. And if you've been watching Breakfast with Sergio, always giving you great advice on the things that you can do to improve as an artist. However, you know, when it comes to results, you have to be patient. So I'm going to give you today three benefits of patience, three benefits of having patience when it comes to your art marketing. And then typically, uh, the comments that I get is like, Sergio, you know, I've been you know, posting on my Instagram and I'm trying to sell online. I see all the artists that are selling online and I'm trying to sell and nothing happens. You know, I post an image, I put a call to action. 
I follow your steps, I do my hashtags, and nothing happens. And, well, when I go to their Instagram page, for example, and I see what they are doing, well, sometimes they're doing things right, but they only have 300 followers or 500 followers. Well, you know, it takes time. You may have the most amazing artwork, but if you don't have the audience big enough to actually see the way you're making, you know, that's why you are not also having results. So you have to be patient. You have to grow the audience first so that you have uh, that audience to show the work that you're doing. And you have to think about this as well. When it comes to your audience, when you, let's say you have an audience of 500 followers on your Instagram. So when you post something to that audience on your wall, well, remember that probably about only 20% of the people that follow you will actually see that post. So that doesn't mean that all 500 people saw it. And that is very important because, you know, that's why, you know, the larger the audience, the more results you will have, again, because it takes time uh, for that audience to see what you're doing. There are many things that happen, right, when you post something on your Instagram or your Facebook or whatever you're posting at, uh, is that, well, first, not everybody will see it. One, because not everybody is online at the same time when you're posting. Two, because the algorithms prevent you from, uh, you know, showing your work to everybody. There was a point on Instagram when everybody got to see everybody's post, but those days are gone. And a lot of the big accounts that you see today, you know, are also accounts that many artists started back then when it was much easier to build an audience really fast. Well, those days are over. You know, it's a lot more difficult. There's more people uh, also, you know, trying to get to those numbers, uh, higher numbers. So it takes more time. It takes more time. So that's why you have to be patient. You have to be patient. It's not as easy as it used to be that you are. Okay, I'm going to pause this now. You got anything to add to that, Diane or Constance? The whole patience thing, it does take time to build your audience. It does take, it's a long-term thing. It's not something that's going to happen overnight, although it has kind of seemed that way, that it has happened that way for people, but it's not necessarily true. Like <laughs> the you know, the, the way things are online nowadays, it's like you don't necessarily know how long somebody's been working on something before something finally happens. And then it's like all of a sudden, it seems like it's all of a sudden that they just got discovered or something. Things don't work that way. It's it's a long-term commitment <laughs> to get stuff working before things happen. That's exactly what I was going to uh, say. You, you, uh, you took the words right out of my mouth when I said that, when you see somebody, you know, all of a sudden, wow, you know, they're, they're showing art that they sold, you know, and everything. And it looks like they, like they came out of nowhere. Well, in reality, they had probably been working at that for a very, very long time and steadily building their audience. And then, you know, we don't see that, that, that struggle. We don't see that, uh, that disappointment. Every single artist who appears to be successful, online has gone through that period you know and and uh and they're probably still going through it even even people you think are famous you know in air quotes they you you can't stop you have to constantly be um upgrading and updating things and constantly on top of it all because as soon as you stop you're forgotten you know everybody moves on to what the next bright and shiny thing is and yeah, I think left behind. I think last week Constance said something about that. She was watching the, uh, what was it the uh, country music awards, whatever? And you said that you had an interview with you watched an interview with Loretta Lynn. What was that? What was that, Constance? You were saying? Yeah, she said that you got. She said that she always had to constantly be to stay out there because her. She always felt like her fans would always forget her if she didn't stay out there, that she had to stay out on the road and be in front of her fans because she didn't want her fans to forget about her, you know, that uh, that was just part of being in the business is to just stay out there. I'm guilty about not staying social enough. I'm very guilty about not being social enough. I have this tendency to want to just stay in a in a painting mode or in a working mode too much and not in a social mode. 
Well, it's hard I, to get, be constantly doing that. It's it takes a lot of effort. It takes a lot of um, consistency, and you know things happen in life that interrupt <laughs> you know everything, and the unexpected mm-hmm. stuff happens, and you you know before you know it, That's time is always you're by. trying to drag your attention it's, away from yeah. your goals. You know, there's yeah. a lot of stuff going on in anybody's life, so. Okay, let's uh, let's listen to the rest of it. He should be getting around to tip number two now. Now playing against the algorithms. Also depends on your engagement, right? The more people like your post, the more people come into your post. So the the algorithm will show it to more people. That means that again, you are at a disadvantage when you are a small account and you're trying to to uh, get uh, results to your post to action. So that's why you have to be patient, my friend. You have to be. Really, really patient. It wasn't really for me until my account got big that I started to get, you know, more engagement. For example, uh, six months ago, or even more, you know, maybe a year ago, at this time last year, if I posted a question on my Instagram, probably maybe you know, three, four people answered. Maybe I don't know. Um, if I post a question today, I posted a question, for example, yesterday on my Instagram. Uh, when I checked it at night, there, there was 150 comments on that post, right? But again, it, it's because the audience is much bigger, so much people are seeing it, and when one person answers and then another comes and answers, the, so the algorithms begin to push that post many, many times so that a lot more people can see it, right? But I could not expect that, you know, when I had only 1,000 followers or even 5,000 followers, you know, it's until my account got much bigger, has the 10,000 that I am able to now get, you know, that kind of engagement. And also, something that is very important and is that I see artists who say, well, Sergio, I ask a question, but I'm trying to get engagement, and nobody answered. Nobody answered. And then when I look at their posts on their Instagram, uh, and I look at all their previous posts, it's like they're not used to speaking to the audience. They're not used to engage with the audience. So if you have just been posting and you are just making a post, putting a comment, and not really getting your audience used to speaking with you and engaging with you. Don't expect that all of a sudden everybody's going to be very talkative or, or you know, very friendly with you and, and engage with you in all kinds of conversations from day one to the next. Because, again, you have not got your audience used to uh, having those conversations with you. So it takes time. But don't be... Uh, this courage, you know, you may post a question and maybe two, two or three people answer that question. That's okay. Engage with those two or three, give them value, you know, continue that conversation. Next time, maybe four and five. And that's how it starts. You know, don't get discouraged. You say, well, I put a call to action and nobody reply. Okay. Yeah. I want, I want to stop that because I have a comment. I, uh, that is so true in the past. Of course, I'm, I have uh, several thousand Twitter followers. I've have, and this is mostly because of my internet radio station. I've built this up, and I I have uh, six hundred some of uh, the uh, Facebook now, which I didn't even realize until recently. Between the uh, the private page and the uh, artist page, those two numbers together, I've now built up six hundred some LinkedIn you know followers. And I'm a thousand something on my uh, on my Instagram. Now, all of these, I've been doing exactly what he says. I've just been posting images of the artwork I'm working on, uh, the uh, podcast that you know I've uh, uh, produced for the old time radio, and not really truly engagement. Little things here and there on a private Facebook, on a personal Facebook page, you know, funny cat videos, whatnot, but not a lot of the engagement as he states. Occasionally, when I have done something, I've experienced exactly what Sergio says. You know, maybe one or two comments, and I go, "Well, God, you know, people, people aren't that interested." Okay, the last couple of weeks, I've tried an experiment. And this came from a genuine need of assistance. You know, I've been entering in several uh, art contests. And so trying to decide what piece of work to enter in a contest for me is almost impossible. Because when I look at my artwork, I see the struggles, the uh, flaws, 
that I forgot to correct, new flaws, new errors, whatever. And it's impossible for me to really try to decide which piece to enter. So I decided to let my Facebook friends help. So I would put the uh, two or three images up and I'd number them and I'd ask, vote on what, on what your, your favorite, the image you like. It has been outstanding. I've done this twice now. And the comments have been, this is how I knew that I had 600 some people on, on Facebook following because they're all replying. Really? Yeah. And it has been just, it has been incredible. And I'm like, Oh my God, this is, this was a gold mine, but it came from a very genuine need of I've, I've asked my audience to help me. I said, I need your help. Help me decide which images. And these folks have, it's like they were sitting there just waiting for me to ask the question because all of a sudden they're jumping in. And they're, they're, not, they're not saying yes, nay, one, two. No, they're actually offering comments. Yeah, that's pretty good. If you add a little more color next time, it would be better. It's been incredible. So now when I post something, and I ask a question, I'm getting comments. I'm getting people that are replying because now they're getting used to, they're saying, Hey, Clyde is interested in my opinion. And that has been made the world of difference. So when Sergio says that, I believe it. I have a personal experience. What about you two? You got anything to add to that? Yeah, I've done that too, asking people question um, and to see what it is that they need help with or um, as far as artwork goes. So yeah, it does help people to have a dialogue, to start a dialogue. Uh, so it's useful. Yeah. I mean, now I've done this in groups. I'm in several different uh, artist groups, you know, the watercolor groups, and everything. And I've commented on other folks' work, and uh, I've asked asked questions. And I get a dialogue there. But this is the first time that I've actually, on across my network, I have openly asked for my artwork, that openly uh, solicited a dialogue, and it's it, it's been it's just been wonderful. And it's, and the point, the most important thing is, it has to be genuine. You know, you're just not trying to do this as an advertising. The secondary fact is, yes, there is that marketing aspect. That's, that's kind of like the, um, use an analogy of a cake. That's the icing on the cake. That's the sweetness of it. <laughs> but if you are genuine with your questions, if you have a genuine need, your audience, they want to hear from you. They want to participate. They want to feel like they're helping you create your art and they're helping your your uh, your career. You know, I had one person comment says, says, keep it up, Clyde. I'm interested to hear how your story ends. <laughs> and my reply was That's pretty cool. My reply was, Okay, thank you, but it could it be the rise and fall of Clyde, you know? <laughs> yeah. Which ended up generating some more comments, you know, I was like, oh my God, this is incredible. In fact, the problem is if I'm not careful, I'll get, you know, spend all the time on social media and not getting art done. Yeah. <laughs> Constance, you got anything else you want to add or yet? Yeah. No, I've just, I've never done, I've never asked anybody, but I haven't entered anything anywhere. So, which I guess I need to start looking into doing. Well, in your case, with your jewelry, some of your jewelry and everything, yeah, you might want to, you know, post some pictures of that and say, hey, I'm thinking about, uh, you know, changing this or that. What do you think? You know, and ask, you know, you know ask. Yeah, ask, like, which one they like better or um, what sizes do you like? Do you like smaller pieces or larger pieces? You know, just ask general questions. Yeah, People but I'm going to start painting more again, so... Um, yeah. The point is to get the conversation started. It's like Sergio said, you know, says you, yeah. the, inter, the interaction. And you may not get patience, patience, patience. So you may not get a bunch of Well, there is the, um, Blick, Dick Blick has the, um, a pastel thing that is free to enter that is when, with Rembrandt pastels. And I was thinking about entering that. Um, because I do work with a lot of Rembrandt pastels, and uh, so you know, you know, like like both Diane and I have told you before, don't think about it, do it. 
Do it. Take action. <laughs> yeah, but you know, which one should I enter? That's the thing. Well, that's the point. Just pick one. Hi, <laughs> just pick one. Well, yeah. And if you don't know which one, put the, take a photograph and put it up on your Facebook page and ask your audience, say, "Hey, which ones do you like?" I'm thinking, of, and do the. Well, do you need to use a newer painting or an, use one that is from? It depends on the on the um specifications of the contest or the yeah, some show you're entering some yeah i guess some i need to read the rules over a little more yeah, some of them are specific about that some of them aren't yeah because what i do see to make it easy for people instead of instead of trying to uh you know say hey you know the to remember the name or the title of it i just use a graphic program and i put a number you know on the on the image one two and three and then I ask, okay, vote for, you know, which one, you know, one, two, or three, or whatever. And sometimes people will say, uh, you know, I like all three, one, two, three, you know, whatever, okay. But yeah. then, then I take every day, then I would look, you know, or throughout the day, I would look, and I would make a little hash marks next to on a piece of paper here, so I know which ones, you know. Like, remember that, that rooster that I did, what, a couple weeks ago, you know? Oh my God! That one got like thirty votes. Whenever when when I had five, that is so funny because that is white tail made up for. <laughs> five images was up there, and that rooster got thirty, and all the other images only got like five votes or six. That's votes. hysterical. I was like I was I was amazed. I never would have picked that rooster to enter in the contest. Never would have. But we we had another little we had another little chicken that finally matured and. He ended up being a rooster, so we finally had to take him and throw him in the, a guinea in a guinea pen. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah, it was too bad. He was he was just wearing out one of the little hens, and she, I pulled her out from the other chicken pen because that rooster in there was just wearing her out. You know, she was she could barely walk. You know, and then I was going, "What is wrong? She still can't walk." And, and so I figured it out I, at, during the evening. I saw him, and I said. Dang, it's a rooster because <laughs> he just finally matured, you know. So I waited until it got really dark and I went and pulled him out and threw him in a guinea pen. <laughs> okay, listeners, here we go. Once again, you know, we have, we'll talk well, about that's, that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> you, can, you, can, uh, you can always uh, edit that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's listen to some more uh, Sergio's tips here. It's, okay, let's get it. And nobody answered. You know, keep doing it, keep doing it if you want to grow the engagement uh, in your page. So really quickly, I'm going to give you three benefits of patience when it comes to your art marketing. The first one is that when you have patience, it lowers your stress level. It lowers your stress level because you're not longer on the edge trying to chase everyone else, comparing yourself to everybody else. You know, it lowers your stress level significant, significantly, right? So that's one of the biggest benefits of patients. You know, you don't have to feel like, you know, I need to have comments right away. I need to have all these likes right away. You know, what for? Right? What for? You're trying to engage with your audience uh, with as, as many as you can or as few as you have. That is fine, right? You're, you're okay. So it lowers your stress level. Number two is that you will enjoy the learning process as well. You will enjoy the learning process because everything – uh, it's a learning process, uh, and particularly when it comes to marketing in social media, because things change all the time. Algorithms get updated, you know, the way things work, you know, uh, change, new features come up, and so there's always a learning curve. Again, if you don't have patience, you get frustrated right away, you don't understand how things work, and you dislike what you're doing, and you feel like you're just make, doing marketing, and you're not really enjoying the process of engaging with the person on the other side, which is something I have talked about extensively in my previous episodes, you know, doing marketing, not just for marketing sake, but as a way to connect with people on the other side, kind of like what this breakfast is all about. It's about connecting with you and having this little time here or a break time where we can have this little chat, right? I enjoy this. This is, I enjoy the process of learning how to get better at it, how to do it. Because, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's something that I enjoy doing, right? It's not just marketing. So think about it that way and enjoy the learning process. And the third benefit of patience, which is very important, 
is you're going to have an advantage over those who are impatient. If you are a patient, you know, you're going to have an advantage over those who are not because you are going for the long-term uh, effect versus the short term. You're looking at the long term. So you're playing long term versus short term. You're playing offense versus defense. And that is very important too. So as an artist, if you're you know, working on your marketing, think about it's a long term process, a long term game. You're not trying to get the quick like or the quick comment uh, doing scammy things. No, you just want to have authentic conversations and authentic engagement with the people that's, that are on the other side of the device. So my friend, I hope you enjoy these three benefits of patience. Be patient, be patient. Just as I'm patient here with my oatmeal, I think it's going to be good after I'm done with this episode. I can start eating it. It's now uh, cool enough that it's not going to burn my tongue. Okay. That was Sergio Gomez. Oh, I always like Sergio. And I, I get the kick out of it. Like, my friend, every other, every other sentence, my friend, my friend, my friend. <laughs> you should be eating eggs, not oatmeal. <laughs> eggs are better for you. But he always, hey, you know, he his his uh, his hook, you know, breakfast with Sergio. He always has a unique breakfast, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he should. Maybe we ought to dinner with Diane and Constance, huh? <laughs> eggs, <laughs> eggs, eggs. <laughs> yeah, you know, eggs. You got so many eggs. <laughs> we, do. we have a refrigerator full. I got a way to get you two to ship me some eggs. You know, <laughs> if they would arrive. Yeah. If I could show them to you, I would. Non-scrambled, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, the the sum up what he said, patience, we're in for a long term, and we've got to do this stuff, make it enjoyable, you know. That gets back to what several comments that Gary Vaynerchuk, you know, has mentioned. He says, you know, in the case of, uh, you know, podcasts, blogging, video, Whatever you are feel comfortable with, whatever your skills are the best at, then pursue, you know? So this is the same way falls in line with this, you know, patience, you know, put stuff out there, put yourself out there on it and it will pay off in the end. I have seen a dramatic increase and that, and I think that's going to segue into seeing all the advertising and all the you know fourth quarter marketing it's the fourth quarter it's the holiday period the stores are already starting to get thanksgiving and christmas stuff everything so this is all the black october (laughs) this is a period and they're true when i look back i look back at the stats in the past couple years i've had most of my art sales either originals commission work or Art on on home decor or apparel products, it's all happened in this fourth quarter period. Every single, mo- the majority of the sales have been. So this is, without me intentionally pushing it, this is what's, you know, happened everything. So, uh, Constance, what is your plan for the fourth quarter? I know you got something big coming up here in October. Tell us all about it. I do. I'm doing the Affair of the Heart in Oklahoma City in October. It will be from the 18th through the 20th at the fairgrounds. I'm in the process of getting ready. So I am busy, busy, busy making things. <laughs> so come by and see me. I will be at booth 617. So I am busy making jewelry. You can see some of Constance's unique handmade jewelry and everything. And, and you- Getting my booth ready. Yes, I am busy, busy. You're going to, uh, like in the past, We've uh, recommendations of having a uh, web gathering email addresses and contacts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I have some kind of a contest for people to can to can uh, give you their email and and win a yeah, and give away a handmade item. Of, right. you know, yep. So part of the process, part of the fourth quarter marketing and everything. Diane, yep. what what's what's your plans for uh, fourth quarter? I know you were last week. You mentioned you were working on these little small paintings. You know, are you? Yeah, I'm. I'm still working on those. Um, I'm trying to get um, all that together, and I have to write up a bunch of um, content emails and things to um, talk about all that. So I'm still working on all those things. <laughs> trying to get it all in order. Okay. It takes time. 
Yeah, I'm looking forward to now. Are you going to be posting these on your on your uh, your website, your Diane Diane Hunt Studio site, or are you going to have them on your Facebook? Um, I'm probably going to be doing them across Instagram and Facebook, and on my through my email um, list. So I'm trying to boost my email list. So that's uh, primarily where I'll be doing it, I guess. Okay. I haven't worked out all the particulars about all that yet but i'm working on it <laughs> all right still got time here we're you know th yeah. things are just starting to rev up you know september september and october is a really good time to to really hit it hard you know and get prepared for the uh november and december buying period because that's when people they, they're, they start looking now and then they start paying their cash you know late you know later on in my case, since I'm on several uh, different sites where my art can be sold on home decor and apparel, all those sites have uh, their individual uh, promotion, kind of collective promotion. They offer like, you know, 20% off of pillows and 30% uh, off of prints and whatnot. And I, I haven't been promoting those like I should. I get advanced notifications all the time because as being a member of the sites, you know, so I'm going this year. I'm going to take advantage of that and push those and see see what kind of results you know I can get posting more notices on my uh, social media accounts you know, and everything. I've been working on. I'm just about done. I've got uh, two more pieces to work on to enter in some future contests, and that's been my main focus because those are coming up in October, November, December. That's my goal for the uh, fourth quarter marketing. We got anything anything else we want to talk about here? We're about ready to wrap this up. Don't let your bank card get ripped off. Yeah, that's right. Constance is telling me a, a horror story. That's what I've been doing all week long. Okay, well, I okay. I offer the overall tip, and in, in, in keeping with uh, tonight's focus was patience, 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 patience. This stuff will work for you. It will. Yeah. Just got to keep up at it. Keep your nose to the grindstone and keep working. It will pay off. And as far as your, for you to take advantage of the holiday season, hey. Work on your product, get your product, get your art products ready, and get the word out there. All right, that's it for this episode of the Artist Friends Podcast for September the 23rd, and this is episode 14. This is Clyde J. Kale, and saying goodbye to everybody. Bye-bye, Diane. Bye-bye, Constance. Bye, everyone. Good night, everybody. We'll see everybody next time. Bye-bye. The Artist Friends Podcast is produced and edited by Clyde J. Kale. Participating artists, Diane Hunt and Constance Brosnan and Clyde J. Kale. You can find more information about Diane Hunt at www.dianehuntstudio.com. Constance Brosnan at www.etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash C-B-R-O-S-N-A-N-S. Clyde J. Kale at www.cjkaleartworks.com. If you'd like to participate or appear as a guest on the Artist Friends Podcast, please email cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com. That's cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com. This podcast is issued under the Creative Commons License 2019. Thank you for listening.